Welcome to Almost Here, Round the Corner of Future Technology podcast with Richard Jacobs. Future technologies, ways to transform our lives for better or worse, are the focus of this podcast. Almost Here means these technologies are now here and starting to be used, or just around the corner, from Bitcoin to artificial intelligence, 3D printing, blockchain, virtual reality, and more. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Future Tech Podcast. I'm your host, Juliette Lamar, and joining us today is Abby Piti. He is the CEO and founder at Nucleus Vision. Welcome, Abby. Hi, Juliet. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. You have such an interesting, interesting product over here at Nucleus Vision. Give our in- listeners a little insight into what Nucleus Vision is and what you do over there. So um, Nucleus Vision uh, was incepted at uh, during my MBA at Harvard in Boston, and uh, it was pure, purely from my research uh, that I was doing what are the main pain points uh, today in the retail industry. And one of the main pain points we uh, identified uh, was the fact that when you go into a physical retail store, uh, you are not able to identify um, or the, for example, if you go into a Nike store, Nike doesn't know who is there in the store. So there is a, a problem of not being able to identify the customer uh, in a physical uh, store location, which sort of limits the ability of a brand or a retailer to service the customer. Um, you know, and you know, basis on that, uh, we uh, created a technology that can enable that in the future, and we are trying to sort of digitize the physical stores so that the customers can get a better service when they enter the stores. And I guess, how does this technology, how would this work within a store? You know, walk us through, if a store wants to implement this technology, what is required and and how does it all work together? Sure. So I'll continue the example of Nike, for example. Uh, We uh, deploy a a small sensor uh, near the store, which is an IoT sensor. uh, And it basically works with the, uh, telecom carriers to identify every customer who walks within within that store. Now the customer will have to give a pre-authorized, um, you know, consent uh, to be for the to the brands uh, to allow them to communicate when they walk inside the store. So the idea is we have this uh, sensor technology that is uh, put uh, very close to the entrance of the store. And then based on the consent we get from the customer, the customer gets a uh, personalized service, you know, or um, personalized offers uh, when they walk within the stores. And how do the customers uh, give their consent? So say I'm walking into a store that I have not been in before. Um, you know, how, how does that work on the customer side? So, you know, I think one of the key things that we are trying to, and the reason why the consumers um uh, you know, like Nucleus Vision, um, is we create a venue, uh, you know, an avenue to allow customers to control their data and their privacy. And I can explain that in a moment, but to answer your question, how people can give consent, it is uh, basically they can uh, choose the brand they want to share the data with. They sign up uh, Nucleus with Nucleus Vision through an app. Uh, that they already are using on their phone. Uh, say, for example, if you use Uber, uh, you can enable uh, Nucleus Vision through any of the phone apps you have. Uh, two, you can download Nucleus Vision's app uh, to enable that consent. Uh, and uh, finally, you know, if you can give it, you can give the consent to any of your service providers, whether it's telecom carriers or you know, whether it's bank accounts, whether it's credit cards. So uh, we uh, are tying up with more and more partners on a daily basis who you can work with uh, to give the consent. Now, the consent um, is required to communicate with the customer within the store to make sure the customer privacy is in check all the time. Now, um, the reason why the consumers like Nucleus Vision is because of three things. Number one, um, today you and I do not know where our data is, right? I mean, you have uh, your data with your you know, cell phone company, uh, you have your data with your credit card company. You have your data with banks, retailers like Amazon, where you shop, Google, uh, where you have all of this data. You have different apps on your phone that have your data. But you, uh, on entirety, don't really know in real time where is your data and what data people have about you. So the number one thing Nucleus Vision does for the people is 
secure that information and create a data map for you to tell you where all your data is. Number one. Number two, um, it basically gives you the control back. It gives you control where you can choose who you want to share your data with and who you don't want to share your data with. You can also choose to completely be off the grid and not allow anybody to uh, use your data for any monetization purposes. Now, third benefit is anytime anybody's using your data, Nucleus Vision compensates you for every transaction that happens using your information. So for example, today, Google, Facebook, everybody is monetizing your data and you don't get paid anything. So the third benefit that Nucleus Vision brings to the consumers who use Nucleus Vision is the fact that you can tomorrow agree and approve every uh, data usage, but at the same time get paid for it every time something gets monetized. So for example, if you go into Nike and Nike is your favorite store, you choose to share your information with Nike and Nike, when he use, when they use uh, their da- your data, you get rewarded for it. That's fantastic. It seems like a win-win. Absolutely. And this solves two major pain points in the retail industry as well, which effectively sort of changes the physical retail forever. Number one, the retailers now have the ability to service their customers better by knowing more information about them in real time. And number two, they can engage with the customer within the store because now they have the ability to uh, en- you know, communicate with the customer and get uh, permissions to use their information and pay for it. So these two abilities uh, have not existed in physical retail so far. Oh, definitely. I've, I've never heard of something like this, and it's it's very exciting. Um, as far as the the technology goes behind this, in real world examples, so say I'm I'm a part of Nucleus Vision and I'm going into a Nike store and I've agreed to use my information. Um, you know, how how do they know that I'm in the store? You know, is it is it RFID, Wi-Fi? Like, how does it all work? So um, it's very interesting that uh, our technology doesn't require any Bluetooth, any Wi-Fi, no GPS, no NFC. It's, it works with, you know, whether it's an Android or whether it's, uh, a, a, you know, an Apple device or any other device. It can be a smartphone. It can or um, or it is, it's a, you know, the old type dummy phones uh, that that people use. So the, the the interesting thing about this technology is it works with any device, any cellular device that has a SIM card in it. It works with that. So we capture a radio signal, uh, basically uh, working with the telecom infrastructure. So we work very hand in hand in the telecom companies to create our own IoT sensors that work with the radio signal of the mobile phone to uh, to get uh, you know to provide this identification on the blockchain, which secures uh, the entire uh, ecosystem. So the technology currently uses the 3G, 4G signal uh, of the cell phone uh, to identify customers, you know, in, in collaboration with the telecom companies. Very cool. Very cool. And so this project, um, so you mentioned that the, you would get rewarded as someone who's using this app. Um, is there a particular token that goes with Nucleus Vision or how are people being rewarded? Yeah, so we use uh, the NCash tokens to revo- reward the customers, um, you know, and that is one way to to reward the customers. But at the same time, um, you know, we have retailers who have requests to uh, promote their promotions in the stores. So one is when you walk inside the store, you get rewarded to NCash. Uh, but the second is, uh, you know, based on your profile and if you're in, in your favorite store and you want to share information and your presence, then the retailer can send you real-time personalized individual, uh, you know, uh, offers to you while you're there. And if, for example, let's say if, uh, if we go into, uh, I'll take Forever 21, for example, um, if you walk into those stores and if you're a loyal customer, you know, people can get can get free parking, home free home delivery. Uh, it's all based on how good a customer you are. And mm-hmm. and we have created through our artificial intelligence technology uh, uh, a way to identify uh, every customer. Um, you know what kind of a customer they are, and it it creates 1,500 categories of customers that you can fall in. And based on your profile, it generates a personalized service offer for you. That's that's fantastic. It's almost like being a VIP customer everywhere that you shop. Exactly. So it basically makes sure that you get serviced based on individual preferences versus a very generic, uh, you know, service that they provide to all customers. So say uh, people are just interested in this company and 
they want to, to buy in with some tokens. You are also having a token sale currently. So, um, frankly, we just had our token sale earlier this, this year. And uh, yeah. in, fact, uh, in fact, we were the largest uh, ICO out of India. Um, yeah. And uh, we, were, we built the largest community globally uh, of uh, retail uh, token buyers. And, uh, and, and we continue to get listed on multiple exchanges. Today, we are on several different exchanges like Binance, um, you know, Big Phoenix and several other smaller ones, um, several other smaller ones. And so uh, we just completed our token sale and um, we continue to expand our reach uh, to different uh, different token buyers globally. Uh, going back to, to the retail stores, you know, what's, what kind of stores are you in so far? And, you know, how, how are they feeling with, with this product? How, what's some of their feedback? Yeah, I think the, there is... Um, uh, there is definitely a lot of excitement from the retailers just because uh, the physical retail uh, is getting disrupted, um, you know, with the online penetration. And the only thing that really differentiates between a physical store uh, and an online at the moment is really the customer experience and uh, and personalization uh, of customer experience in the store. So they are very, very interested in getting the solution. Uh, today, uh, we have uh, you know, beginning of the uh, entire journey, we did a, lo- a lot of the signing of the MOUs with some of the largest brand houses in the country, uh, which has a total of uh, close to around 14,000 stores, um, you know, and several um, several brands in, in the reach of somewhere around 100 plus brands uh, underneath them. And at the moment, we are continuing to deploy sensors in India uh, as a starting market. Uh, we have a huge interest from the U.S. retailers. And as soon as we um, uh, reach uh, a threshold in India, we would we are we are definitely looking at expanding in the United States uh, in the next year. How exciting! This is this is at right at the beginning of where where it's all coming together. It must be so exciting for you to see all this coming together. I think so. I think we we are early. We have a huge community that supports us. Uh, we we have raised enough capital to uh, go out and do this. And I think the agenda here is to change the way retail works in physical stores. I mean, the technology applies to not just retail, but also uh, to banks, uh, to restaurants, to hotels. I mean, uh, the idea is if you can imagine um, a a future where, uh, you know, the even the advertisements are are based on who is uh, who is in the vicinity of that advertisement, whether it's AR, VR, uh, whatever format that you uh, that you that you like to engage with the customer. Yeah, that was going to be my next question. What are some of the, the the upcoming things you'd like to implement into Nucleus Vision? I think we have a long roadmap, uh, and I think we you know we have given ourselves uh, the next uh, you know four or five years building this infrastructure out globally. Um, we believe that uh, the applications range from not just retail uh, but also security and connected homes, uh, connected devices. So I think we will continue to expand uh, globally, establish the infrastructure of IoT. Uh, we are definitely we are building a, an entire marketplace for where the buyers and sellers of data can engage uh, and compensate uh, the consumers who who's, who own this data in the first place. Um, so we are continuing to expand uh, on the functionality of the marketplace and reach out to more and more partners. Um, and then finally, I think uh, we are putting uh, artificial intelligence, uh, you know, call it artificial intelligence modules on top of it, uh, which will effectively not just uh, identify um, presence, but also cater to the customers uh, on their preferred uh, preferences shared to to whoever is providing services uh, to these customers, whether it's a restaurant or whether it's a retailer. And this, you know, this is meant. This type of technology is meant to be used in live retail stores. Is there is there a transfer over for online shopping at all? Like, would your rewards be transferable to your online shopping, and vice versa? Your online shopping then follows you to the in-store shopping. Is it kind of a little ecosystem? Absolutely, right. I think you know. I mean, nine almost um, you know over ninety percent of the uh, retail. Uh, transactions happen in brick and mortar, but a lot of the retailers are omni-channel now. Uh, for example, Gap, uh, Gap is omni-channel, and uh, almost 40%, um, you know, of these customers who shop online 
uh, they drop off at the at the cart level. So they select these products, and then when it's time to check out, they drop off. But most of them go back to the stores and get the uh, get the the products. So one of the ways to connect the online and offline is to cross promote customers who come to the store. So for example, if I know like uh, if you have come to Nike uh, uh, yesterday, you were looking for a particular product, but you didn't uh, find it. Uh, you know, then I can promote it to you online. Vice versa, if you go online and you did not buy it, but you go to the store, uh, you know, I have enough uh, intelligence. If you permit uh, permit me, then I can share that information that is available in the store uh, and at a better price. You know, the one of the things that we are also trying to do is, you know, just like Uber or airlines, if if we can get this connection between online and offline, then we can really create uh, individual pricing uh, for each customer, uh, which is effectively uh, personalizing their uh, shopping experience, much like airlines. No, absolutely. And, you know, you hear a lot of talk about how brick and mortar stores are soon going to be ir- irrelevant. In in your experience, do you think there's always going to be a place for brick and mortar stores? I, uh, you know, this was, uh, um, uh, you know, a paradox that I have been uh, part of uh, in the discussions uh, with the, with larger retailers and board members and 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 a lot of board uh, boardroom meetings, and the general consensus around the industry is that brick and mortar is here to stay. Uh, however, the format of this brick and mortar will change. Uh, the number of products within the retail store will change, um, and the formats will become a lot smaller. However, just because the the social element has has now is now revolving around going to a mall for the weekend as as a social behavior so there will be always people going to the malls and uh and when you have so many people getting together uh you know the brands would like to you know create uh, a marketplace to sell products and when they do that they 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 will always be people and product and there will always be a physical retail experience uh, around it's just that it's going to change the format and this is why we are well positioned because the if you want to personalize somebody's experience uh, the data uh, in real time would be utmost necessary to do that successfully. No, of course, of course, and that's that's such great insight. Thank you for sharing that. Absolutely. Um, so if people want to find out more, you know, if retailers want to want to implement your your service, uh, do you have a physical product that is out there? It's working. How uh, how do they get it, get started? Absolutely, I think uh, we uh, have. We are deploying the sensors in India at the moment with some of the major brands and brand houses in the country. Um, they can reach out to us uh, through uh, our website, which is www.nucleus.vision. And uh, we, we always get inbound inquiries about the business uh, from uh, major retailers around the world. Uh, we do uh, are exploring a distribution uh, agenda so that we uh, leverage some of the existing infrastructure with the distributors in those countries, but uh, the way to the way to reach out to us would be our, either our, our website or um, you know email email me directly. You know at I'll be at nucleus dot vision. And are you at all involved in social media? Should people look to to your social media outlets at all? Absolutely, I think we have one of the largest uh, uh, following on Twitter. Uh, we are we have uh, all the channels active. We are on Facebook. We we believe social media. Uh, has been a huge help, and we continue to um, continue to use that very actively. Fantastic. And the website is nucleus.vision. Abby, thank you so much for joining us today on Future Tech Podcast. This is a very exciting technology, and, and I love that it's a, it's a new way for customers to feel empowered while shopping. Absolutely. I think uh, the idea is to give the control back to the consumers. Um, again, uh, Juliet, thank you so much for having me. It, it was a pleasure to be here and looking forward to again catching up soon. Thank you so much, Abby. That was Abby Petit. He is the CEO and founder at Nucleus Vision. Their website is nucleus.vision. Thank you all so much for tuning in to Future Tech Podcast. This has been Juliet Lamar. We'll catch you guys next time. You have been listening to Almost Here, Around the Corner Future Technology Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Subscribe to this podcast, both to review to discover more future technologies that are poised to transform our lives for better or worse, such as Bitcoin, artificial intelligence, 3D printing, blockchain, virtual reality, and more.